Adorama TV presents Photo on the Go with Joe McNally, where you'll go behind the scenes to see how great photos are made. Here's your host. Hi, this is Joe McNally with Adorama TV. What we're going to do in this particular segment is talk about line of sight TTL and how far we can get that signal and different types of pre-flash. So we're going to experiment out here in the darkness with translating a TTL signal for a distance. And we're going to use two different sources. The one that comes with certain types of cameras, known as the built-in flash or pop-up flash, using that as a commander to drive a light that's a considerable distance away. Now, I get a lot of questions in my classes stemming from the whole issue of getting line of sight transmission for TTL flash. Like, first off, why do you do it? Why do you bother using TTL where you can just go manual with a radio? Totally fine. I do experiment with TTL. I would have to say TTL is my default. The reason I use TTL is that the camera's brain is working for me at that point and oftentimes gets me into the ballpark quite well and quite easily and quite fast, possibly faster than even if I set things up manually and went up and back down the block changing the values on my flashes. One of the limitations of line of sight optical transmission to TTL is the angle of reception, but also the distance. And there are some questions out there, I know I've, I've seen them in my classes, about the efficiency of the pop-up flash or the built-in. Like, oh, I can't get my TTL signal to my flashes, my remote flashes. The built-in isn't strong enough or I'm having problems with it. So let's start off with the built-in. I've got a D800 here. I'm going to send uh, a noted Hong Kong photographer, Raymond Cam, who's based here and has been our eyes and ears because he knows the city backwards and forwards, he's going to walk down the block with an SB900 set up on Group A, Channel 1. Sensor is going to be oriented towards me, and then I'm going to use the pop-up or built-in and signal him to go down the block, and let's see how far we can get this signal. Okay, behind me is a typically busy, neon-lit Hong Kong street. So Raymond has got an SB900. I'm going to ask him to go about 15 feet and then another 15, 30 feet, et cetera, et cetera, on down the block, and we'll see if we can get line of sight transmission with this tiny little built-in flash. Ready, Raymond? Yes. Go on down a little bit, if you don't mind. Okay, so now I've got line of sight transmission at that distance. My camera's set up on manual. I'm at 60th at F2.8 with an ISO of 200 which is a lower ISO than you might suspect for night shooting. But the fact is the neon's pretty bright and that's what I'm concentrating on. So a little bit counterintuitive. We're out here on the streets at night using a fairly low ISO. Still got it down there, okay? And that is a good distance away now. You can see him, he's pretty far down the block. I've kept my 70 to 200 zoom at 70, but he's getting so small in the frame, I'm gonna rack it out and go more telephoto now for this one. Okay, there he is, and I'm out of gas with my pop-up. Raymond, come closer. Got him back. So I would say that that distance from Raymond to I, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's six car lengths parked. So that's a good distance. That's got to be 100, 120 feet. So that's the pop-up or the strength of the pop-up. Let's switch over to a more expensive, uh, more versatile solution of using an actual flash, an SB900, for transmission purposes of TTL. Okay, switching things up. We saw the range of the pop-up extend to about 100, 120 feet, which is pretty surprising. Here's a little field observation. Again, this is not engineering speak, okay? Nikon engineers would probably be horrified to hear me say this, but I think that the pop-up is very efficient at transmission of TTL because of its tiny size. It's a, a, just a kind of little pinprick of light and it's very contrasty and very bright. So my thinking is that much must wake up the TTL sensor. It must be 
very attention getting, you know, in a mechanical sense. That's just kind of a guess. But of course we saw the limits. Now let's go to the big brother here. Let's go to the SB900 and start using that as a commander flash talking to that light that Raymond's gonna hold. All right, going back to 70 on my zoom, on my 70 to 200, I'm still at the same exposure, 60 to 28. All right, here we go, Raymond. Okay, interesting. We ran out of gas with TTL at a, probably about 60 feet. It's about three or four parked cars. So, interesting, right? The pop-up had more range than my SB900. But what can I do with the 900 to extend its range? I can take off the dome diffuser, which is definitely killing some power. I'd even take off the filter holder, okay? On the SB900, you've got this clear plastic filter holder. I actually have experienced it having a bit of an exposure factor or cutting my line of sight TTL range and effectiveness. So I'm taking everything off of the lens of the flash. And I have it back, okay? So Raymond's gonna go further down the block. Okay, from here it looks like, once again, I'm at the outer limits of TTL transmission. I still have one more line of defense though. I'm gonna take my commander flash and I'm gonna zoom it from 17 millimeters all the way out to 200 millimeters. Got it back. So now I have Raymond bathed in flashlight, literally a block away. There he is. All right. <laughs> now we're getting pretty interesting here, getting a little aggressive. Let's see what happens. I've got it. That's the reason I kind of mess around with TTL. If I can get transmission, I don't have to walk to that light. I can talk to it right from here. We experimented with getting line of sight TTL transmission down, you know, the better part of a city block. Okay, cool, why would you do that? Well, in this instance, I don't wanna be near my model or my subject. I don't wanna work wide angle. I wanna stack the neon up with a telephoto lens and use the compression of the lens to kind of bring in that color and make it sort of layer on top of itself. So I asked Fong with Raymond to go down the block. Now the basic equipment we're using here is one SB900 flash with an SD9 battery pack plugged into it for efficiency and a little extra boost in the power, a 24 inch Easy Box Hot Shoe Soft Box, okay? It's the one with the white interior. It's actually the design that I gave to Lastolite to make the, the soft box appear a little softer in terms of its quality of light. What Raymond's doing is holding that soft box or positioning it with a Sureline paint pole, which is a hardware store item. On top of the Sherline paint pole, we've got a KC pole adapter screwed in, and then the Easy Box goes on top of that. So white interior Easy Box, paint pole, line of sight, TTL transmission, long lens, stacking it up. They're gonna go down the block. We'll shoot a few pictures. Now I've got transmission with Fong. I'm gonna take a look at my exposure. Looks good. Now, Raymond, go to her side. Okay, just to quickly recap, we started out with a transmission test for TTL. Okay, we used the pop-up, the little built-in flash that comes right on the camera of a lot of models. And we saw how efficient it can be. We got that signal to 120 feet, maybe. Then we ran out of gas, predictably went to an SB900 and used that flash as not a flash, but just a commander to talk to the light down the street. So put that on the hot shoe. And we saw a couple of strategies for extending its range by taking off the dome diffuser, zooming the flash head, 
okay? So the signal gets tight and punchy. And we saw this transmit TTL signals, oh, maybe 150, 180 feet away, all the way down the block. So the reason you'd want to transmit a TTL signal down the block is the ensuing shoot that you saw with Fang, who's a wonderful, beautiful model here in Hong Kong. I wanted to put her in front of Neon, and I didn't want to be close to her with a wide angle lens. I wanted to use a telephoto compression so that the Neon would stack up behind her. So I had to get her down the block for me, and I had to be able to talk to that light. So the final settings on this were SB900 flash on camera as a commander, zoomed to 200 millimeters, and I was telling that group A light to run minus three. My final ISO, surprisingly, was ISO 100. I'm hand holding the camera, and my shutter speed was a 40th of a second, and my f-stop was f4.5. I varied things a little bit throughout the course of the shoot, but those were the basics. And the important thing for me was that I was able to sit down on the ground over here and I was able to tell the light to come down in exposure to minus three, never leaving this position, just working with the pre-flash, that optical signal that talks to the remote light. This is Joe McNally for Adorama TV from the streets of Hong Kong. Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store. This is Joe McNally from the streets of Hong Kong. I'm here with my faithful companion, Drew. We're fighting the never-ending vandal. Hang on. So this 